Hey Block Talkers, today we're going to be talking about who will play us in a movie, in a horror movie. Since Halloween is approaching, we want to really get into the mood of horror, scary, gory. So, I've been told two things, worst case scenario. The actor that best resembles me will be George Lopez, worst case scenario. Best case scenario will be Taylor Lautner, since the age difference is pretty dramatic for me to George Lopez, I will choose Taylor Lautner. Um, even though I'm way, way, way behind, you know, on a level uh, with Taylor Lautner, um, yeah, I think he's a good choice because he's proven himself as a good actor. So, you know, I'm going to stick with Taylor Lautner even though, you know, because this face doesn't really have a handsome in it, but I try. My movie is going to be called The Unknown Gift. So... Um, it's going to be a short film and it's going to be more type of low budget to kind of prove to people that even low budget films can also succeed. So if this film were to ever be released, it will be low budget to prove to other filmmakers that, you know, low budget films can also succeed and all that stuff. You really don't need a lot of money to produce a really good film. And like, that's something that I think a lot of people kind of forget. So that's how my, that's the whole pre-production and all that stuff that's gonna happen so my story is gonna be based kind of on a true story something that happened to my mom but I'm just gonna change it up a little bit to include myself so here's the story I will be playing myself as Mark and my mom and my sister will be playing their, their themselves as well and we are all going to go to a road trip to go visit one of my aunts in El Paso Texas which is about eight hours away from here, from Austin, Texas. As we drive into the cold, windy, dark night, as we get to our aunt's house, our aunt lives in a very poor neighborhood, but a few yards away lives an old guy who has been her neighbor for years. As soon as we got to my aunt's house, the old guy suddenly rushed outside. He came walking very calmly, and introduce himself to us. He looked at me with a lot of passion, as if I were to remind him of something from the past. All of a sudden, he just stopped and thought, and he started crying, all of a sudden. And then he said, oh boy, you remind me so much of my son. He would be about your age, and you look just as handsome as he did. I asked, what happened to your son? He died eventually. Tragic day, tragic. Then he just stopped talking for a while. An awkward moment occurred. Then he said, I got a great idea. I have a present for you and for your sister. Wait right here and I will be right back with a very good present. We insisted that he didn't give a present, but he still insisted to bring one. He rushed home like nothing. He grabbed the items he was going to give us and he came right back. He gave my sister a doll that was about her height, four feet. And he gave me a puppet that was also very heavy. It seemed like it was made out of those really, really thick wood. And, you know, I didn't think of it as a very, you know, pleasuring gift. My sister, by the other hand, she loved the doll. She never had a doll that big. And, you know, it looked like it was pretty expensive. After the encounter, we said our thank yous and when we went into my aunt's home. We, you know, ate dinner, usual. We catched up on things. Then we went to sleep after a long, long road. We were planning on staying there for a while, but something unexpected happened. A few hours later, around 3 in the morning, we heard ambulances, policemen, and fire truckers outside. We heard a loud knock on my aunt's door. We went outside. And we found out that the 60-year-old guy had died. Someone had murdered him. 
We didn't know why, and we didn't know who. All we know is that a very innocent, yet friendly guy had just been murdered. And we were so shocked about what happened since we just met him a few hours ago. They interrogated us, asking us questions. And we told them everything we knew, but we kind of forgot to mention that he had given us the doll and the puppet. My mother decided it'll be best for us to leave and we shouldn't be around that kind of activity, especially my sister since she was fairly young. We went in the car and we went last minute, went back home. We cut our vacation short. My sister was still kind of sleepy and was in the back seat while I was in the front seat. I was holding a puppet in my hand and I learned to appreciate the puppet more and more since that innocent guy had died. And I was thinking to myself, maybe he came to me for a reason. Maybe he didn't. Same thing for my sister. Out of nothing, my sister starts screaming. She says, it's moving, it's moving. My mom stops the car and I look back and I said, what's moving? She keeps on screaming, the doll, the doll. She had thrown the doll on the floor of the car and couldn't stand it. I for one second saw it move as well. <laughs> and I got it and I threw it out the window. My mom just drove by because she didn't even know what's going on. We're in the middle of the highway. Anything could have happened. We all panicked. I looked at my puppet and I also threw that out the window. We panicked and didn't know what was going on. It was really strange what we saw. After seeing an innocent man who was barely, you know, out there, giving random travelers a doll and a puppet. Randomly seeing the doll move. I started to wonder why would he have a doll if he only lost his son? All those questions still remained unknown. But later that week, we found the newspaper claiming that they found a doll and a puppet filled with money in the middle of a highway which happened to be the highway that we were driving in. The whole family was in shock. We didn't expect that were to happen. Later, we ended up knowing that the old guy was actually in hiding. and was actually a billionaire hiding from people who were trying to find him to hunt him down for his money. He had left most of his fortune in the doll and in the puppet which explained why they were really heavy. Giving it to two young people who were innocent and were just driving by. No one knows what happened to the money. The cops had confiscated it and we never went to go clean. But that thing is certain. Whatever happened to that puppet and to that doll, left a scar behind. Before my character threw the puppet out the window, a letter had fallen down into the floor seat of the car. And my character picks up the card and has information about evidence about who might have done this to him. He eventually thought and probably knew he was going to die that day and left it up to me to figure out what to do with the cake. And that's where we have a sequel.